Eighteenth Day of Abide in Christ by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. In Stillness of Soul. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. Be silent to the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Psalm 77, verse 7, margin. Truly my soul is silent unto God. Psalm 60, verse 1, margin. There is a view of the Christian life that regards it as a sort of partnership in which God and man have each to do their part. It admits that it is but little that man can do, and that little defiled with sin. Still he must do his utmost. Then only can he expect God to do his part. To those who think thus, it is extremely difficult to understand what Scripture means when it speaks of our being still and doing nothing, of our resting and waiting to see the salvation of God. It appears to them a perfect contradiction when we speak of this quietness and ceasing from all effort as the secret of the highest activity of man and all his powers. And yet this is just what Scripture does teach. The explanation of the apparent mystery is to be found in this, that when God and man are spoken of as working together, there is nothing of the idea of a partnership between two partners who each contribute their share to a work. The relation is a very different one. The true idea is that of cooperation founded on subordination. As Jesus was entirely dependent on the Father for all his words and all his works, so the believer can do nothing of himself. What he can do of himself is altogether sinful. He must therefore cease entirely from his own doing and wait for the working of God in him. As he ceases from self-effort, faith assures him that God does what he has undertaken and works in him. And what God does is to renew, to sanctify and waken all his energies to their highest power. So that just in proportion as he yields himself a truly passive instrument in the hand of God, will he be wielded of God as the active instrument of his almighty power. The soul in which the wondrous combination of perfect passivity with the highest activity is most completely realized has the deepest experience of what the Christian life is. Among the lessons to be learnt of those who are studying the blessed art of abiding in Christ, there is none more needful and more profitable than this one of stillness of soul. In it alone can we cultivate that teachableness of spirit to which the Lord will reveal his secrets, that meekness to which he shows his ways. It is the spirit exhibited so beautifully in all the three Marys. In her whose only answer to the most wonderful revelation ever made to human being was, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And of whom, as mysteries multiplied around her, it is written, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And in her who sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word, and who showed in the anointing of him for his burial how she had entered more deeply into the mystery of his death than even the beloved disciple. And in her too who sought her Lord in the house of the Pharisee with tears that spake more than words. It is a soul silent unto God that is the best preparation for knowing Jesus and for holding fast the blessings he bestows. It is when the soul is hushed in silent awe and worship before the holy presence that reveals itself within that the still small voice of the blessed spirit will be heard. Therefore, beloved Christian, as often as thou seekest to understand better the blessed mystery of abiding in Christ, let this be thy first thought, Psalm 62 verse 5, margin, My soul, only be silent unto God, for my expectation is from him. Dost thou in very deed hope to realize the wondrous union with the heavenly vine? Know that flesh and blood cannot reveal it unto thee, but only the Father in heaven. Cease from thine own wisdom. Thou hast but to bow in the confession of thine own ignorance and impotence. 
the father will delight to give thee the teaching of the holy spirit if but thine ear be open and thy thoughts brought into subjection and thine heart prepared in silence to wait upon god and to hear what he speaks he will reveal to thee his secrets and one of the first secrets will be the deeper insight into the truth that as thou sinkest low before him in nothingness and helplessness in a silence and a stillness of soul that seeks to catch the faintest whisper of his love teachings will come to thee which thou never hadst heard before for the rush of noise of thine own thoughts and efforts thou shalt learn how thy great work is to listen and hear and believe what he promises to watch and wait and see what he does and then in faith and worship and obedience to yield thyself to his working who worketh in thee mightily one would think that no message could be more beautiful or welcome than this that we may rest and be quiet and that our god will work for us and in us and yet how far this is from being the case and how slow many are to learn that quietness is blessedness that quietness is strength that quietness is the source of the highest activity the secret of all true abiding in christ let us try to learn it and to watch against whatever interferes with it the dangers that threaten the soul's rest are not a few there is the dissipation of soul which comes from entering needlessly and too deeply into the interests of this world every one of us has his divine calling and within the circle pointed out by god himself interest in our work and its surroundings is a duty but even here the christian needs to exercise watchfulness and sobriety and still more do we need a holy temperance in regard to things not absolutely imposed upon us by god if abiding in christ really be our first aim let us beware of all needless excitement let us watch even in lawful and necessary things against the wondrous power these have to keep the soul so occupied that there remains but little power or zest for fellowship with god then there is the restlessness and worry that come of care and anxiety about earthly things these eat away the life of trust and keep the soul like a troubled sea there the gentle whispers of the holy comforter cannot be heard no less hurtful is the spirit of fear and distrust in spiritual things with its apprehensions and its efforts it never comes really to hear what god has to say above all there is the unrest that comes of seeking in our own way and in our own strength the spiritual blessing which comes alone from above the heart occupied with its own plans and efforts for doing god's will and securing the blessing of abiding in jesus must fail continually god's work is hindered by our interference he can do his work perfectly only when the soul ceases from its work he will do his work mightily in the soul that honors him by expecting him to work both to will and to do and last of all even when the soul seeks truly to enter the way of faith there is the impatience of the flesh which forms its judgment of the life and progress of the soul not after the divine but the human standard in dealing with all this and so much more blessed the man who learns the lessons of stillness and fully accepts god's word in quietness and confidence shall be your strength each time he listens to the word of the father or asks the father to listen to his words he dares not begin his bible reading or prayer without first pausing and waiting until the soul be hushed in the presence of the eternal majesty under a sense of the divine nearness the soul feeling how self is always ready to assert itself and intrude even into the holiest of all with its thoughts and efforts yields itself in a quiet act of self-surrender to the teaching and working of the divine spirit it is still and waits in holy silence until all is calm and ready to receive the revelation of the divine will and presence its reading and prayer then indeed become a waiting on god with ear and heart opened and purged to receive fully only what he says abide in christ 
let no one think that he can do this if he has not daily his quiet time his seasons of meditation and waiting on god in these a habit of soul must be cultivated in which the believer goes out into the world and its distractions the peace of god that passeth all understanding keeping the heart and mind it is in such a calm and restful soul that the life of faith can strike deep root that the holy spirit can give his blessed teaching that the holy father can accomplish his glorious work may each one of us learn every day to say truly my soul is silent unto god and may every feeling of the difficulty of attaining this only lead us simply to look and trust to him whose presence makes even the storm a calm cultivate the quietness as a means to the abiding in christ expect the ever deepening quietness and calm of heaven in the soul as the fruit of abiding in him end of eighteenth day